Prime Minister concerned about undue delays in processing payments to public workers. Details to this story and more in the National Report. With the National Report, I'm Delroy Luzon. Prime Minister and Minister for Finance, Dr. The Right Honorable Keith Mitchell, has promised to hold accountable permanent secretaries and finance officers across the public service who cause undue delays in processing payments to public workers. That was the overriding theme at a meeting with permanent secretaries and finance officers called by the Grenadian leader and Minister for Finance on Wednesday. Dr. Mitchell called the meeting because of serious concerns stemming from delays of payments to public workers at the end of January. He says finance officers play a critical role in the service since they are responsible for the actual payments of people's bills and as such, the nation depends on them to uphold that responsibility in a timely, efficient, caring and unbiased manner. According to the Prime Minister, the January disruption was especially more troubling in cases where it affected workers on the lower salary scales. He noted that it, as a caring employer, the system must therefore be held accountable and must be prepared to take action when any officer deliberately does not do his or her job in the execution of duties to workers and to the country. Grenada recorded a 4.5 percent growth in 2017, the highest among borrowing member countries of the Caribbean Development Bank. That's according to a recent report from the CDB. The report further states the growth is largely due to the positive developments in tourism, construction and education. Tourism Minister Dr. The Honorable Clarice modest Cohen told the gathering at the launch of the an OECS Tourism Competitiveness Project that the sector is an important pillar in the country's development. There are many things in life that we often take for granted, and we do so at our own peril. As a country, we have had many opportunities on which to build. I would like to draw attention to two very recent occurrences that we may have taken for granted. So lest we did, let me remind us. The first is our country's recognition by the Caribbean's Journal Travel Awards 2017 as the destination of the year. This recognition came as a result of our new hotel developments, the new branding of the destination that is serving to bring us many more new visitors and the largest industry growth rate. The second is the performance of our national economy of which, to which tourism has contributed. The Caribbean Development Bank reported on the 7th of February on our Independence Day, brothers and sisters, that Grenada has the highest growth rate among its borrowing member countries for 27, a growth of 4.5%, largely due to positive developments in tourism, construction, and education. Antigua recorded a 3.0% growth, St. Lucia 2.9%, Guyana, 2.9%, and St. Kitts Nevis, 2.8%. This is a national report. More news after the break. The safety on our roads make this a major priority. Health of our people, a crucial necessity. Accidents happen when road users are either irresponsible or inconsiderate in one way or the other. Play your part. Reduce your speed. Be attentive. It is your personal responsibility. Let 2017 be the start of no more road fatality. Be safe. Be seen. Be smart. So let's wise up as a nation. Get to your destination. Safe. Grenadians are being encouraged to adopt rainwater harvesting and management practices as the island continues to grapple with the effects of climate change. This advice from the National Water and Sewage Authority, NAWASA. So far for January, Grenada's meteorological office has recorded the total rainfall at 105.5 millimeters, which is above average since the country's dry season commences during that month until May. On mainland Grenada, the issue of proper water distribution is not as severe as in Karakou, 
but there is little pipe bone water. Nawasa's general manager, Christopher Husbands, says water storage is a challenge for both households and his company. He highlighted the importance of the rainwater harvesting practice in Karakou. In Karakou, we only have coverage in Hillsborough. There's extensive coverage in Piti Matnik. As part of our new system, we have pipes um, running through the entire area from Madame to Kendis. Our main challenges tend to, of course, be a continuous supply. Some systems have dropped considerably in the dry season, and because we don't have adequate raw water storage, we are forced to regulate the supply because we just don't have enough to give everybody a 24-hour supply because the rivers have dropped. Senior Agricultural Officer Benson Patrice explained the process of collecting and storing water. So you have people collecting water in barrels, drums, and then you see a clot tied to the drum. And that drum will be positioned under the spouting from the house, and that would be the source of water for domestic purpose. Of course, a drum of water is just about uh, 55 gallons. So how long would that last? So some of them had many drums. And um, see on average six drums per house, that might just last them one month on average. So of course, if you don't have or receive rain fall for an extended period of time, then they would have to source water elsewhere. Here is where the ponds and the wells came in. According to husbands, the recent fluctuation of rainfall patterns and scarce water resources has made the water sector vulnerable with the real threat to water security in the future. We have to invest in storage to take us through the dry season. Homeowners can assist by also investing in rainwater and storage, whether it be rainwater and or nawasa, so at least we can sort of ride out the, the period together. We know it's going to come every year. We have to make the necessary preparation, both at the state level and at the, the um, residential and commercial level, to make sure that we don't have interruptions and poor quality of service. And finally, this year's first scholarship awardees are in high spirits after having received the awards. 75 scholarships worth more than 22.2 million EC dollars were presented by the St. George's University, the Government of Grenada and the Grenada Houston Association. The awardees have well-defined plans for their future and are excited to pursue studies free from the additional financial burden. Here's what a few of the 62 SG awardees had to say. I feel extremely proud. I cannot even contain myself because a lot of persons would have applied for that scholarship. And I feel really extremely proud of myself that I would have gotten through. Time for school was coming up and I wasn't sure if not. And when I finally got a call, I was very relieved. I just want to help people. So in that case, that's why I really chose to pursue medicine over other career fields. My ultimate goal is to come back and help Grenada. The health system needs help. And I think that as young and upcoming doctors, we can come back and more or less fill the gaps where there are gaps within the healthcare system. So I was very elated when I found out that I got a scholarship. I saw all my dreams coming before me as reality, you know, no longer dreams. I could see myself in a clinic, you know, performing all the skills that I would be learning in the school. Now recapping the main story. Prime Minister concerned about undue delays in processing payments to public workers. And that ends the national report for February 14, 2018. Reporting, I'm Delroy Lausanne.